What up students? I'm here to talk to you about 7.1 assessment and more specifically problems 7, 8, and 10 on the assessment as you can see on my screen here. I've decided to talk about these because I think these were the biggest trouble for uh, students. I've had the most questions about them and um, they actually help out with the more issues assignment than is due um, in the upcoming day. So here we go, let's start with number seven. So seven is um, ammonia, NH3, is made by reacting nitrogen and hydrogen. So uh, ammonia is the thing that's made, which is the product, and then nitrogen and hydrogen are reacting with each other, which makes them the reactants. So that's why nitrogen and hydrogen are on the left side of the arrow, and, and um, ammonia is on the right side of the arrow. So you can see the, the equation there it's already balanced for you it's already written out so you don't have to go through the trouble to do that so we have we have our n2 oops we have our n2 plus three h2s and they react to make two nh3s so what that is telling me that is i only need one n2 to react with three h2s and when i do that i get two nh3s now, I'm writing the one there just to show it to you, but obviously when um, there is no number, it is implied that it is one. All right, so here we go. So the question is, how many moles of NH3 can be made if 7.5 moles of H2 react with enough N2? Okay, so what is given to me is 7.5 moles of H2 is given to me. And what I'm trying to find is how many moles of NH3. So, put question mark, mole NH3. Okay, because I'm trying to make a connection with 7.5 moles of H2 to figure out how many moles of NH3, I need to use my mole ratio for um, those, two, those two items. So there is... Two different ways I could do the mole ratio. I could do it where I have three moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3 because those are the coefficients in front of um, each of the, the molecules in the um, equation. Or the other way I can write it is two moles of NH3 over three moles of H2. So which one do I choose? Well, it depends on what I'm given and what I'm looking for. So I'm given, I'm given 7.5 moles of H2. And what I'm looking for is moles of NH3. So I have to get from 7.5 moles of H2 to how many moles of NH3 I need. So what I need to put in between that is either this uh, mole ratio or this mole ratio. So either the one on the left or the one on the right. And the one I choose is the one on the right. And why is that? Because what I'm trying to find, so I'm trying to find the moles of NH3, so I'm gonna put that on top. And then on the bottom, is the moles of H2. I want to put that in the bottom because when I'm given 7.5 moles of H2, that's considered an on top unit. And when I have two moles of NH3 over three moles of H2, the moles of H2 are on the bottom. If I have a unit on top and a unit on the bottom, they cancel out. And so then I'm left with just one unit that's not canceled out, moles of NH3. So now I just do the math on number. So I have 7.5 times 2 is 15, divided by 3 is 5. So it's 5 moles of, of NH3, and that is my answer for number 7. All right, let's go with number 8. Number 8 actually asks us to do a little bit more than what we just did with number 7. That's all good. We're going to have to do some molar mass conversions, and we'll still have to do some more ratio stuff. But because the molar mass conversions are in there, it makes it a little bit longer. So here's the steps to this. So I am trying to look for the mass of 
NH3. So I want to know what the heck the mass. So the um, the grams of NH3 when I'm given 35.0 grams of N2. Okay. So an, the only way I can find how many mass or how many grams of NH3 I get from how many grams of N2 is by figuring out how many moles I have of each in this reaction. So in order to find the moles of N2, I have to first figure out what the molar mass of N2 is. So one mole of N2 is equal to, let's see, the molar mass of one nitrogen is 14.0 grams times two because there's two nitrogens. And so what that leaves me with is one mole of N2 is 28.0 grams of N2. So now I take that, I take that ratio there to convert, I put one mole of N2 on top because that's actually a unit that I want to find in my answer. And I put the 28.0 grams of N2 on the bottom. And in doing so, the grams of N2 on the bottom and the grams of N2 on the top at the beginning cancel out. And what I'm left with is moles of N2. And so now I do the math on the numbers and I have 35 grams times one divided by 28. And that is 1.25 moles of N2. So when I have 35 grams of N2, and I know that one mole of N2 is 28 grams, I need to have more than one mole of it, because 35 grams is more than 28 grams. And in fact, I have 1.25 moles of N2. So now I need to get from my moles of N2 to my moles of NH3. So I have to use some conversion factors, or excuse me, some mole ratios. The first mole ratio I could use is there are two moles of NH3 for every one mole of N2. And that's the ratio that's given to me from the coefficients of the reaction. Or the other way to look at it is one mole of N2 or two moles of NH3. So now I know that I have 1.25 moles of N2. And I know that I'm trying to find so many moles of NH3. And in order to get from moles of N2 to moles of NH3, I need to use one of the two mole ratios. And because I'm given moles of N2, I want the mole ratio where the mole of N2 is on the bottom, which leaves two moles of NH3 on top. And this works out good because the 1.25 mole N2 is on top unit, and the one mole N2 is on bottom unit. So all I'm left with, after I cancel those two units out, is moles of NH3, and that's what I want in my answer. And so now I do the math. 1.25 times two divided by one is 2.5 moles of NH3. All right, I'm almost done. Now that I have the two moles of NH3, I have to figure out how much mass 2.5 moles of NH3 is. In order to do that, I have to figure out what is the molar mass, or what is the mass of one mole of NH3. What's going to be equal to the molar mass of each of those atoms in the, in the molecule. So nitrogen has a molar mass of 14.0 grams. And then the hydrogens, each one has a mass of 1.0 grams, but because there's three of them, I do 1.0 grams times three. And so the molar mass of... NH3 is 17.0 grams NH3. And so now I do the math on my moles of NH3, which I have 2.5 of them, two moles of NH3. And then I need to put a mol molar mass conversion. And in this case, I need the one mole of NH3 to be on the bottom, so it cancels out with the mole 2.5 mole NH3 unit that's on the top in the given. And I know that there are 17.0 grams of NH3 for every one mole of NH3. And so I keep that on top. And so when I do the math on the units, the top, the on top and on bottom units cancel out. And so all I'm left with is grams of NH3 for my unit 
And when I do the math on the numbers, 2.5 times 17 is 42.5 grams of NH3. So one mole of NH3 is 17.0 grams. So 2.5 moles of it, which is 2.5 more mass than 17.0 grams, which is 42.5 grams of NH3. All right. Let's go on to the last problem here, number 10, which will be much quicker and easier than number 8. Number 10 is just, okay, how do we write a balanced equation from given information? I know this was troublesome for some, so I thought I would show it again. So we have, a, in number 10, write a balanced chemical equation for the formation of magnesium oxide. So we're forming magnesium oxide, which means magnesium oxide is the product. Whoa! So I write, I'm going to write my arrow here, MgO, because I'm forming MgO. How do I form it? I form it from magnesium and ox oxygen. So magnesium is just Mg. Then oxygen, it's a little bit tricky, but it is going to be O2. And... Why is that? Because oxygen, oxygen in nature can't really ever hang out by itself. It needs to be paired up with another partner just because it's too reactive um, all by itself. So now what I have is I have MGs on each side. I have one on the reactant side, which is the left side, and one on the product side. So the MGs look good. Now the oxygens, or the O's, I have two on the reactant side, and I have one on the product side. So we are no longer cool there. We're unbalanced with the oxygens, and the only way I could get it balanced out is by putting a two in front of the MgO, and that multiplies the oxygens by two, but it also multiplies the magnesiums by two. And that's an issue because now the magnesiums are balanced out, but an easy fix would be, put, would be to put a two in front of the magnesium there, or the Mg, and that would take that up to two. And so now I have two of everything on both sides. So that works out totally awesome, man. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope this video is helpful. Please, please, please reach out to me with questions. I can't help you unless I know what you don't understand. And um, best of luck on your quiz, even though this isn't on it. But this will definitely be helpful for your mole ratios worksheet. Check you later, dudes.